Welcome to OM Report by Andre Alpa, your interview focused podcast on topics from online marketing to internet startups. All right, we're at the OM Report, and this time it's with Greg Bowser. Greg, can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Greg. Um, I'm an SEO guy. Okay. I'm actually, my actual job is president of products and services for Blue Glass Interactive, so I'm not technically an SEO guy anymore, but uh, I still run the strategy team at Blue Glass. And, so how many people uh, is Blue Glass? We're about 45, last count. And it's pretty, pretty much a new brand, right, in the, in the business? Yeah, it's, uh, we like to call it a mashup, kind of, so it's several of my partners, we all had uh, consultancies individually, and then uh, a year ago, June, uh, four of them got together and merged and created Blue Glass, and uh, then I met them here, well, I, I already knew them, but we, they came to Oktoberfest last year and started talking to me about coming in and running the search division, and uh over a few beers, that sounded like a good idea. So I said yes and uh, merged my company into it. And now a year later, um, like I said, I moved out of the search and I run the products and the services. So we were developing uh, some tools and, and stuff like that. And then I also Towards run this. like monitoring or, or like um, workflow management tools or what kind yeah, of Yeah, kind of enterprise level um, SEO and, and marketing tools to manage that. A lot of uh, the processes that I've used, I've, been doing this since I don't know '96, so um, basically before it was search engines, basically before yeah before <laughs> there back when we used to argue about the name SEO before the phrase even existed. So there was not very many of us back then, and uh, so over the years, just a lot of the methodologies that we put together and some of the internal tools that we had at my old company, um, we decided. Can you probably give like one really really specific example? You know, uh, without well, giving away too much, like what what yep. would be such a tool? That you uh, think, the thing that wow, we've been, we have that and it's really cool yeah, and it's really helpful that we've and been, others uh, don't. Working on this year a lot is uh, we had an internal tool, a visibility scoring tool okay. that basically would go out and pull positions, but it also factored like market share of the engine, average click through rate. We had some data. On positions. Yeah, we had some data that I got from would you drinking with uh, search people over the years, yes, right? Yes, yes. As far as percentage of clicks. Uh, and so we I think would use that. There was like that. a leakage a while ago, like a year or a year. Yeah, and, a half and there was ago. AOL data, uh, so part of that was factored in there. And we used to use that in my company to do performance-based contracts, where we could come in and baseline and establish and they a would visibility trust, score. But they would trust your visibility score. I mean, was it is, because I think your customers need to have like a certain level of expertise mm -hmm. in order to be willing to let themselves, you know, uh, uh, you know. Put their lock on your visibility yeah, the, index the, without being afraid of you manipulating something. The you way know? that we did it, so in those contracts, we would uh, be fully transparent and disclose how we calculated it. Okay. So if they wanted to check it, I mean, they could actually do the math manually if they wanted to. Uh, so there is definitely in that kind of model uh, a bit of client education. Yes. Um, but we found it was our you clients know, in the U.S. In, in general that you know. Um, far I, out, I yeah, think. you know, I was. Or is it a lot of education actually? Um, For me personally, it wasn't, but I tended to get, you know, when you've been doing it long enough, like if somebody calls me, yes, yes, yes. You're like I don't really like take a lot of clients that are new to the space. They've usually been referred by somebody, so uh, probably a little higher caliber client as far as knowledge yes, yes. Than, than some places, but uh, it was very interesting because I was really the only, not too many SEOs work that way. And you know, in Germany and in some parts of Europe, and he worked that way since about three years or so. With really? The, there are like three tools that provide uh, visibility index. Mm -hmm. with yep, like uh, Systrix and... Um, Systrix, yep. Search Metrics, and then there's like two or three others. Uh, so, yeah, ours is... Is it similar, it, it, but it like with similar? the custom keyword base, you know, that's that's adjusted to the client? Is that right, so how, basically how what we would do it? is, in those kind of contracts, is we'd establish uh, a bucket of phrases that the client agrees on. We basically take a snapshot of what we feel represents the majority of the search traffic, usually 50 to 100 phrases, and their estimated volume as far as search traffic, so we can quantify how much a phrase is worth, and then... 
our payment system and our bonuses would be based on how they rank for that whole body of phrases. Okay. So it'd be a global visibility score for the whole domain. So yes. we could run that and then... But in the, in the keyword space of this client. Right. right. So we could run it and say, all right, for this... Um, Apples, right? For all your Apple keywords, you're the 27th most visible site on the web, and we can see Understood. how uh, how big the gaps are between the scores. So we could look at that and be able to get an idea. So usually, the what client? it would take to get them to move, yeah. and then what we would do is we'd establish that baseline, and then we would usually start like on a 12-month contract, and we would have a certain level that we had to reach in increasing that score over that 12 months. And if we hit that, then the contract would get extended, and we'd have a new metric. So usually worked out to be about a three-year engagement if we okay. hit our numbers. And we would come in and we'd start working for but probably... They would pay, pay a fixed fee and additional bonus yeah, if, so you reach the, if you hit the it buttons. It was basically about 60% less than what I would charge on a, a normal consulting gig. So I'd work for cheaper up front and with the bonus tier, you obviously. Yeah, and the nice thing is at the end of those, the tail end of those kind of contracts, because as a small shop, that was really the only way I could scale. And so the nice thing is when you're in the tail end, you don't really have to do a lot of work and you're, they're paying uh, significantly more than you would have charged them. So it ends up working out to be about 3.5x return okay. on it. The upside for them is if we don't hit that metric in that first year, then, it's they, cheap for them. then they can walk away yes. and they paid a lot less than they would have to other firms. So uh, we took that tool and that was part of things that I brought into the Blue Glass thing. And right when I got to Blue Glass, Google rolled out all their localization stuff in the States. And not only including Google Place listings, but also flavoring the organic listings sure. based With, on where sure. you're searching from. And in which kind of searches there are, because some searches yep. are obviously local. If you're looking for a hairdresser, you're obviously not looking for well, hairdressers. And, and but the big thing that they, the change they made is they started taking queries that didn't have a geo yes, yes, yes. qualifier to it. But they can they can figure out which queries usually would have a geo qualifier mm -hmm. and, then, and then blend in some local results in those. Yeah, and so we got really fascinated about it. And then the other thing they did is uh, they gave everybody a location. You could no longer opt out of it. So it used to be you had to be logged in to get that uh, location thing. And so for our bots that crawled and created this visibility scoring, they would just not take cookies so you could get an ac accurate snapshot. Then what happened is even bots have cookie or location now. So all of a sudden we noticed that I came in one day and our bots at the time were in Dallas, Texas. And all the data was skewed I started seeing all these Texas domains and local Dallas, all these sites in the organic, and so it threw the numbers off, and I was like, wow, that's, how do we, we can't do this model anymore, because it's, how do we get accurate data like that? So that got us on the mission to rebuild this tool to where we can select and run that same thing on dozens of different geos and qualify them based on population, and so basically, to do it, it's, you know, we want to go look at the top 50 U.S. metros and see how you rank in each one. So now that bucket of 100 words becomes, we have to query that 50 different times. Understood. So from a scalability standpoint, it's it's been... It's just a lot more yeah, data. Yeah, it's, it's and more requests to, to Google, that. so not getting banned and managing the IP. So that's what we've been working on um, this last year since I've been there. And we're just getting ready to... We're rolling out internally now, and uh, it'll be fully operational by by January. But it also ties in, so not only can you can score it, you can parse the data uh, anyway. So we can now look at stuff as like what kind of sites rank in cities with less than a thousand, a hundred thousand people in them, right? And we can start seeing trends and tying linking profiles, and really now understanding what's how Google's driving all that. And now we can go back to doing the performance-based stuff. Um, but it's very interesting because you mentioned search metrics, and I, I had a call with them on Monday, and I, I love their stuff. Um, but the data they get, or anybody, it's not just them, anybody that's doing it based on crawling.com, it's so different than what people are actually seeing. Yes, from the services. And, yeah, because it's uh, – and so what we find is, like, clients would be like – okay, my traffic's dropped, but I rank. They see themselves ranking. But they don't know where they're not and where they're not. So now we're going to be able to really give them very micro-focused information on that and be able to build strategies around that. So, um, And that's going to roll into the rest of our tool suite, which will do backlinks and you know be able to go 
take those sites, query them, get all the backlinks, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to uh, start working with search metrics um, kind of jointly and, and offering their tool to clients as well because it's very complimentary, yep. the stuff we're doing. Um, so hopefully early in the year they're going to add some APIs and we're going to be able to I'd love to use them as our data provider. They're, I really love their stuff. Um, and I think matched up with our ability to bring that kind of thing to the table from the states would be pretty powerful. So, mm-hmm. uh, And now we're going to be able to get back into doing some performance-based stuff. And If, if you look at Blue Glass, it seems like it's, it's, like a, it's a band of superstars, I, I would call it. And it's, it's funny because if usually for me, you sometimes you either have like single persons that have themselves as a brand uh, mm-hmm. or of some sort and then they are these one man consulting armies I would call them that mm-hmm. you know yeah definitely been there <laughs> yes you, you know what I mean and then some of those guys then they they tend to you know some some are willing or some prefer to build an organization around that to kind of scale it a little bit and you bring it into structure but then again you know this is not as easy as well but I, I, I'm not aware of you know usually Like each of the agencies, they're mo- many times they're branded by like a single, a s- right. one specific right. single person in them, and then there's this blue glass thing that just shows up, and it's uh, isn't it confusing? Or I mean, do you have to build a brand, um, or are you guys? Well, it's like interesting. To- That's those are great, and it, you know the number one comment, um, and even since I was the last person to join, and even though they're all my friends, when I first saw, I was like. That's a lot of chiefs, not a lot of... Bra- There's a lot of ego there, you know what I mean? It's like everybody's uh, well-known, been doing it for a long time. It's like, I can see prop. Like, how is that going to work? And... Um, But what was, the, what was the idea behind it? Do you think... It, it's it, that that the certain size companies are not willing to to work with individuals, and this is why you know it, well, it's it does a make, bit mis- of that. So make yeah, sense to interesting. When you're, the, when you're the small shop, typically what happens is a lot of times you get projects that are too big, and we already outsourced each to each other anyway. So my my focus is primarily organic SEO. That's what I'm known for, and 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 so when I'd have social media stuff these are guys I would re- either refer clients to or subcontract them um, and then there was and then you have your larger agencies and and they um, do they do a lot of outsourcing to vendors as well so it really wasn't kind of a one-stop place where you could get it all so that was the idea it's like uh, the sum of the parts could be more powerful than us individually um, the challenges in doing that have been you know a lot of the same thing that everybody thought it's like it was and you come in and not only that not only are you merging up the personalities and the egos of of the people that ran those companies but you're also merging employees and and systems and everything and they came out of the gate with a ton of they already had it's like we never shut down retooled clients yeah so out of the gate you know I stepped in blue glass had like 120 clients and very large and fast moving but did you all like did they all switch contracts from this from the individuals to blue glass did you, did uh, most you, did, did you yeah. go all the way yeah wow. um, it's quite some work I didn't bring a lot of clients into it at the time but the other companies did and so there was a bit of chaos you know and it took we learned a lot over the years uh, of Because how to make you know that these one-man SEO armies they also sometimes they work out of home they're mm-hmm. not probably not even used to working in an office going to an office each day and did you do you have these cases as well or um, not so, so I still work from my home oh okay because I'm on the west coast okay uh, but everybody else is most of everybody else is in our office in Tampa we have an office in downtown LA that I, I go to uh, not every day but uh, it's primarily for programmers so our a guy that came with me for my company is our VP of products uh, he's in LA and him and I go to that office and work but it's not a regular daily thing uh, but everybody else was already in Tampa pretty much because Dave's company search and social uh, he had mer- merged with Lauren Baker previously so they were already working in that office um, Chris and Danielle Winfield came down they actually relocated from New York so they live in Tampa and they're in the office daily so I'm I'm really the only one that, <laughs> of the partners that's not... Okay, so I was bitching about you when I was yeah, asking that yeah, question. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't know. And it's, it's interesting because... You should have given me a sign. I would have stopped it. I've done I've done both. I worked from home. I We had an office for many years. Uh, and then in the credit crunch thing, we ended up shutting the office down and uh, just decided to get lean and not be wasteful because <laughs> we were wasting money like everybody was in that time. It was... And uh, so I was back working from home, and it's 
it's an interesting adjustment. And then I also have the East Coast, West Coast thing. So uh, I get up a lot earlier now okay. than I ever used to. Okay. Uh, to just make sure I'm available for more of the day with my team back there. Okay. So that was a interesting thing. So how do you co coordinate? Mostly like Skype or some we video chat? We do a lot chat. of Skype. We